Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and something odd has happened in the last uh, couple years that I would never expect to hear in my life. People calling Unreal Engine slow. So why is this? Well, first off, there have been a lot of high-profile games created with Unreal Engine 5 that have had performance issues. And this goes right back to basically today. This week, we have a new release. Now, actually, kind of funny enough, uh, Epic Games on their blog did this post about built with Unreal Engine 5, Borderlands 4 delivers ambitious scale with World Partition, Nanite, Lumen, and more. Those are all really key technologies at the core of Unreal Engine 5. You can think of Nanite like a super LOD system. You can think of World Partition as like a streaming system and looming as a global illumination system. And all those are designed to be like just work. And they're supposed to enable you to create games with massive scale. Uh, and we've seen some very impressive Unreal Engine games, but we've also seen a lot of um, this. So here is uh, Borderlands 4, which literally just released on September 11th. I'm recording this on September 12th. And if you go down and check out the reviews, uh, it's not good. Uh, so, and from what I've heard, actually, it's a pretty good game, but what you're hearing again, performance, 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 so Stutterland, this is calling it Stutterlands over here, and again, it's Unreal Engine 5 that is being blamed, along with Denuvo, the um, DRM system built in there, but quite frankly, I have never seen Unreal Engine get as much flack as it has this year about games that are released on it that are having problems. So go back to the very beginning of Unreal Engine 5. One of the first games released was Lords of the Fallen, the remake of that. That definitely had performance issues. We had Remnant 2 out of the box, had some huge performance issues. Star Wars Jedi Survivor, Mafia Old Country, Oblivion Reboot, Silent Hill 2, the new Metal Gear Solid game. There have been just so many games with like these performance issues behind them. And when we're talking about performance issues, what exactly does slow mean? Because frankly, Unreal engine can push polygons with the best of them. It can build super complex games. But when people see performance issues, it basically boils down to one of these four problems. So it's shader compilation. This is with all game edge. When we move to more and more shaders on the GPU, they need to be compiled at some point in time. And sometimes when you go into a new section of the world, those shaders compile and everything comes to a screeching halt. The, one of the biggest problems we have for performance, regardless to your game engine, is shader compilation. This is just one of those things. On top of that, we also have traversal stuttering. This is when you're moving between the worlds. So you've got, you're on one area of the map, you go into another area of the map. It's a big open world, but it doesn't have all that in memory at a time. So it streams that information in. This can cause stuttering as well. This is called traversal stuttering. And then we've got another aspect of this. And a lot of the early titles with Unreal Engine, this was the problem. They were using features, Unreal Engine 5, I've shipped with uh, Nanite, Lumen, and so on. Uh, World Partition, I think, came in Unreal Engine 5.2. The problem is a lot of these technologies had issues at first. They got fixed over time or improved over time, but um, using those features early on could definitely cause you some issues. And then finally, we have the good old-fashioned one, a lack of optimization. And that is going to be key to this story later on. Sometimes developers just write bad code. A lot of times, developers just write bad code. So sometimes it is on the developer, and sometimes it is basically a priorities problem where people are building for uh, cutting-edge consoles and hardware, and then at the end, trying to make it run on everyone else's computers, where this is sort of reversed from the way that it used to be done. So what we have is Tim Sweeney actually mentioning this directly uh, in an interview. It was at... Um, uh, South Korea, so the, the Unite Key Fest. My God, there's too many ads on the web. That's why I removed all of them from Game From Scratch, by the way. There's no more ads there, just links to bundles that are going on, and I think that's a much nicer way to use the web. The web is a repulsive thing without ad block. Anyways, uh, so what we've got here. Uh, the main cause is the order of development. Is saying Sweeney. Sweeney, of course, being the CEO and founder of Epic Games, Tim Sweeney, um, said in a media interview after his Unreal Fest keynote in South Korea, many studios build for top-tier hardware first and leave optimization and low-spec testing for the end. Ideally, optimization should begin early before full content build out. Uh, we're doing two things, strengthening engine, engine support with more uh, automated optimization across devices and expanding developer education so optimize early becomes standard practice. If needed, our engineers can step in. So that is one of the big reasons why Tim is saying that we're seeing all these performance issues is that basically the developers are developing for like the super high-end systems and then worrying about everyone else later on. And they're saying that 
you should do it otherwise, which is kind of funny because there's actually an idiom in the world of development that premature optimization is the root of all evil. So it's kind of one way or the other. So we do have some things coming from uh, Epic Games in terms of addressing this. So like the performance backlash against Unreal Engine 5 has definitely been high enough that they can't ignore it. Like you said, Tim Sweeney was literally just asked a question after the Unreal Fest, one of the first questions he got was, what do we do about all these performance issues? So it is a thing. Uh, you got some of the key engineers here. Uh, these guys, some of the engineers that worked on the Unreal Engine um, shader caching system there. Uh, and they have this basic document about the shader caching aspect, why it works, where things go wrong, how you can fix it, and so on. And this is not a trivial problem. Uh, Unreal, and U Unreal Unity and Godot all suffer from uh, shader compilation glitches. It it's kind of just a new problem in the world just based on the way that we do graphics. But they do have this tech blog talking about how to work around that. On top of that, they've also been using technology to try to improve things. So again, Nanite, when it came out, Nanite was this promise that you could use as high detailed models as you want, and Unreal Engine will just take care of the rest for you. And it didn't really turn out that way. And then as we moved on, they've also added some features to improve the performance of Nanite. So the early games like Lords of the Fallen and Remnant 2, for example, could benefit from this going forward. So this is something that early Unreal Engine 5 games might have suffered from that later ones may not. Uh, they've added things like Nanite uh, compute material optimizations, which should get you performance upgrades as well. And the uh, developments are ongoing. So in Unreal Engine 5.6, which at the time of releasing this, one of the things we have right now is this whole um, geometry streaming. So when I went back here, so this, where you hear Nanite computing uh, and the shader stuttering, they all kind of go together onto this. The performance issues here, the shader compilation is a big one. But this one here, this is traversal stuttering that we'd be looking at here. Uh, and that is what they're addressing here with this new fast geometry streaming plugin, which enables you to load in geometry as you're moving in, in a more performant way that you shouldn't see those hitches. Although I do also have to point out, this is Unreal Engine 5.6 and it's experimental. So that does not mean that fast geometry streaming is going to be the savior for the world traversal stuttering issues, uh, because quite frankly, experimental doesn't even guarantee it's going to make it into Unreal Engine. Plus, uh, these things generally, uh, like we saw early on with Numen, uh, Nanite and Lumen, they take a few releases to like kind of hit their stride. So this one isn't gonna happen immediately, but it is in the works. And then we also talking about in the works, we got Unreal Engine 5.7. This is the coming soon iteration of it. And we've got the public roadmap of what they are working on there. Uh, some of these things like Substrate, which is a new material system, uh, and Omega Lights, which is a new ability to give off lights from pretty much any system in the scene in the world. That, that's actually kind of a new neat lighting system, but these are not performance optimizations, but this one maybe. So we've got Nanite Foliage and Skinning. Uh, so Nanite Foliage is an industry-leading rendering path that allows Nanite geometry to collapse to Nanite voxels depending on the distance from the camera. These subpixel voxels are able to retain detailed animations and material characteristics all at a fraction of the original cost, allowing worlds to be built with more robust and lifelike animated vegetation that can be delivered at 60 frames per second with current generation hardware. So if this one makes it through, once again, note this is tagged as experimental, which means that 5.8, best case scenario, it is a beta, and then 5.9 or Unreal Engine 6, whatever we come there, might be when we finally see this as solution. So there are some tech solutions to some of the problems that they are facing. There are some training solutions towards people, especially when it comes to uh, the shader compilation issues there. Uh, but these are all in the future. And then we've got ultimately another interview from Tim Sweeney. Uh, he did this uh, on the... Um, Oh, who was it? Nat Friedman podcast. Uh, and he talked in that particular uh, podcast here. So here, oh, sorry, Lex Friedman. Uh, at the end, he had this one here and he's talking about Unreal Engine 6 and what we can expect there. And really, we don't hear a lot about Unreal Engine 6. We know it's going to be more of a merging of uh, Unreal Engine for Fortnite and Verse into one kind of mega project. But they said kind of there's some technical issues that we've got just with the way that hardware has evolved over time, which you can also link back to a lot of these performance issues we've got, where Unreal Engine may just not be necessarily matching up with the hardware of today. 
Um, so with their next generation game engine, Epic Games wants to address a number of core limitations of their current technology. One example of this is the engine's single-threaded simulation, which has become a limiting factor for many games. Plans to embrace multi-threading, allowing games to benefit from CPUs with higher core counts. This should address the, um, the CPU issues in many Unreal Engine 5 games, which is great news for gamers and game developers. Uh, so we got part of the quote here. Uh, the biggest limitations that built up over time is the single-threaded nature of game simulations in Unreal Engine. We run a single-threaded simulation. You know, if you have a 16-core CPU, you're using one of those cores for the game simulation and running rest of the complicated game logic um, because single-threaded programming is order of magnitude easier than multi-threaded programming. Uh, we didn't want to burden either ourselves, our partners, or the community with the complications of multi-threading. Over time, uh, that's become uh, an increasing limitation. So we're really thinking about and working on the next generation of technology, and that being Unreal Engine 6. That's the generation we're actually going. We're actually going to go and address a number of the core limitations that have been with us over the history of Unreal Engine, and get those on a better foundation that the modern world deserves, given everything that we've learned in the uh, field of computer computing in that time frame. So yeah, uh, it, it definitely, they are looking at tech issues going forward. They've identified some of the problems they've got today. Now, interestingly enough, this thing that they're looking at here, this is exactly what Unity just went through. And that was that was not a smooth process, but Unity just went through this with their dots or the data oriented technology stack and the burst compiler and all that stuff, which was to make it so that there is a decoupling here so you can better take advantage of multi-core CPUs and GPUs. So uh, Unity, their new foundation, and theoretically the heart of what is going to be Unity 7, they've already gone through this process of becoming more parallel in the way that it executes. It looks like this is going to be a key tenet of Unreal Engine 6. And that's the, the side effect. You know, Unreal Engine 6 was built on, sorry, Unreal Engine 5 was built on 4, which was built on 3, which was built on 2. There's a lot of legacy code in there. And sometimes you just got to pay the tech debt to get past that. So ladies and gentlemen, that is it. Is Unreal Engine slow? Of course not. Does Unreal Engine have performance issues? Definitely. Is Unreal Engine to blame for it? Some of it, definitely. Some of it is on the developers. And what Tim Sweeney said about, you know, just building for the high-end device and hoping it works later on low-end devices, that mindset just doesn't work anymore. So ladies and gentlemen, that is it. Is Unreal Engine slow? Not really, but it definitely has some performance issues to work around. And I hopefully we've addressed in this video what, what slow means, what people are talking about when they talk about Unreal Engine performance. Uh, and also, they don't talk about the games that did quite well. So we tend to focus on the titles that are awful. And it doesn't mean that these, these developers, uh, like Gearbox Software, doesn't make Gearbox Software a bad developer. Even oh, CD Projekt Red are, are talking about some of the issues they're having with porting Witcher 4 over to Unreal Engine. So it, it is a thing that they all have to deal with. Uh, so don't just blame the developers here, but don't just blame the game engine either. It's a mix. But definitely there are performance issues to be aware of. And hopefully in this video, it helped you understand what those are. So that was it. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.